fostering deeper relationships, influencing behavior change, developing resilience. You're about to start winning. Here is your host, Christine Bright. Welcome to Parenting Game. We are in episode three of our education on bullying. Again, I'd just like to remind parents that bullying isn't something that just happens on the playground among kids. This is something that can happen in any social setting and can have an adverse effect on our communities. And we've been talking a lot about the negative effects that bullying has. We can also talk about the mental health piece. And today we want to let you know that there is some great news to help combat what bullying does to our community. And that is resilience. Today, again, I have Winona Brewster, who is going to be sharing with us the seven parts of resilience and how we can teach that to our children and to our people in the community. Winona, thank you so much for coming and joining me again. Well, thank you for inviting me. And I I'm really excited about this piece because again, in the first three episodes, you know, we talked about a lot of heavy stuff. Um, you know, what bullying is, how it affects our community, how it can be in any social setting. And I know that can build up angst amongst people who are watching. And then we, we did the important piece of understanding of not only how it affects our mental health, but how it affects our physical health when we have these adverse child experiences. Now we did talk about uh, one good thing that, you know, one good healthy relationship in a life can help mitigate, uh, you know, what that damage has been. And so that's something we want to encourage people is that it doesn't take a lot to be intentional with somebody and help combat those adverse effects that bullying may have had on their lives. Today, we are going to be talking about resilience. And I know with uh, parents that I coach and talk to, there isn't a real good understanding of what resilience is, um, educating them that this is something that they can teach to their children. And I also think the flawed thinking of, you know, oh, kids are young and they're resilient is, yes. is a very um, flawed way to look at this. So I'm going to let you delve in. Um, there are seven parts to this, and we are just really interested to hear these parts and how we activate them. Thank you for having me again. Mm -hmm. um, they, a couple of things I just want to share with the audience. I keep the computer in front of me with information, not because I don't know it, but I don't want to forget something important. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, well, and that's, that's the, the best one thing too. Share. Just you know, with the anti-bullying commission and what we've been doing, you guys are staying so true to definitions right. and your mission, and yeah. we really want to make sure that. Um, Again, we're not putting in our thoughts and opinions that this is research-based yes. material. Exactly. And the best way for me to ensure that is to have the information mm -hmm. in front of me. The other thing I would like to say, and, and I invite you, Christine, as we look at the, the, the resilience information we're going to share today, please remind me, if I don't mention it, how that applies to something we can do regarding bullying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes, as you know, I get very enthusiastic <laughs> in the moment and I lose my point. Yeah, I have no problem jumping issue. in. No you problem know. jumping in. Yeah. So uh, basically, uh, when we talk about bullying, uh, when we talk about building resistance in children, we're actually talking about more than just helping them to recover from something that's difficult. I think sometimes that's what we think mm -hmm. building resilience is about. We're also talking about enabling them to thrive. In, in situations where while everything is still okay. In other words, teaching resilience is teaching a set of life skills, basically, yes. that can be used all the time. And, and I, I, again, want to emphasize that piece, that this is teachable stuff. It isn't kids are just resilient or you're just a resilient person. Right. It's teachable and there's actionable pieces to yes. this. And in fact, when I'm working with adults, on this topic because this is something we talk with a lot of educators about and other professionals. Uh, one of the first things we have to work through is the idea that resilience is not something you're either born with or not. Mm -hmm. If you're born with it, you can handle anything. If you're not born with it, it's too yeah, bad, tough so sad. Luck. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's why 
this model is so important. And uh, what I'm going to do is talk about the seven C's, seven C's <laughs> is in the letter C, model of building resilience. And what I like about this model was created uh, when I was working at the Academy of Pediatrics with Dr. Ken uh, Ginsberg. He's a pediatrician, adolescent development specialist, and he found, uh, uh, he designed this process, and it's, you can get it on uh, healthychildren.org, which is a parenting website for the American Academy of Pediatrics. So everything I'm sharing today has been, once again, it's evidence-based, mm -hmm. it's been researched and tested out. It also works across cultures, and works across uh, different um, learning environments. And that's one of the other reasons that, that I, I like to use this work. Um, uh, so we're gonna discuss that model today and we're gonna do it through the lens of working with families, obviously, because mm -hmm. that's who the audience is, and how it can be applied to either bullying behavior that we see uh, or working with our children if they've been bullied. Yeah. So. And then one thing uh, you had shared with me the other day that I really liked um, before we delve into the individual pieces is that it looks like a mobile. Yes. So that, can you do that yes. mental picture? Yeah. It can look a couple of ways. Apparently, tinker toys are not the way they used to be. Because <laughs> I was going to establish a model where you had the tinker toys with the one big one yes. in the middle and then the seven little satellites. I could not find tinker toys that would work for anything. <laughs> so, but the other thing that I, other image that I use because it's not an unfamiliar image with parents is a child's mobile. We know that when you set up a child's mobile, if you touch one piece of it, it affects everything else in the movement and the stability of the mobile. Mm -hmm. And I like people to think about that. When we're talking about the seven C's of resilience here. Uh, that each of them is important. They are equally important. There is not one that's more important than any of the others. There's a bottom line that's really important. And we'll be talking about that. But each of these pieces are very important and they can be used in a classroom, in a family. They can be used in a workplace to build a team. Um, once we understand those concepts uh, and uh, and they we have positive results. So essentially the seven C's are, if you look at, again, the mobile itself says resilience. Mm -hmm. The seven C's are the foundation uh, for the, the bigger picture, and each of them overlaps with another. So we, we never talk about them in isolation. Um, and those seven C's, I probably want to name them all before I start talking about them. We certainly have confidence, building confidence. Mm -hmm. Some of you are going to listen to and say, well, that's a no-brainer. Everybody does it. It might be a no-brainer, but everybody doesn't do that kind Correct. of work. So it's confidence, connection, community, contribution, coping, control, and uh, I think that's all seven. I yeah. think they named all seven right yeah. there. I should be counting them out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will just share also with the audience, usually when I do this presentation, I've got a very dramatic board in front of me. I've got my notes in front of me. I look like I know a lot of stuff. I know. Yeah, I just had to tell reader. you. It's like, there's going to be no pointing. We're going to have a nice set. Right. And, uh, and yeah. it is a very nice set, by the way. <laughs> we'll test that. So let's start out with competence. So really, what is competence? And essentially, that's the ability or feeling of being able to handle situations effectively. Mm -hmm. uh, this is acquired through uh, actual experience and positive feedback. Uh, children need a set of skills the, uh, and knowledge and attitudes uh, that allow them to trust their own judgment. We've mm -hmm. talked about that before, the ability to trust their own judgment, the ability to make responsible decisions, responsible choices, which means accountability is built into that, and to face difficult situations, not run away from them. Um, to enhance this, we notice and praise children on when they're doing something well, and we value their work rather than uh, uh, their end product. Mm -hmm. And so it's that conversation about not what great piece of artwork is this necessarily. You're not forbidden from saying that, but perhaps what's more important is these brush strokes are really interesting. Can you tell me more about what you were doing there? Yeah. Really engage them so that they can come up uh, with something where they're focusing on their personal strength. And this empowers children to make their decisions confidently and effectively. Um, and I, you know, yes. something that I coach parents with on the, that competence piece too is 
um, tend in our busy world, we tend to make a lot of decisions for our kids instead of offering them some choices that will help build their confidence. Uh, you know, do you want to wear the blue jacket or the green jacket? Do you want to wear a hat or not wear a hat? And, and in our busyness, we're like laying everything else, put your hat on, do this, yeah. this, and this. And we can do a little bit of a disservice by not allowing our kids to have, you know, choices. And then, well, if they don't wear a hat and they end up being a little bit cold, they'll learn from that choice. Yes. Um, another piece, I loved how you talked about, like with the brush strokes, and I share with parents too that often we're only praising that end result and not the effort that went into it. And two, that like if they did a lot of effort and that end result didn't come out well, it wasn't a good outcome, doesn't mean that it's all bad. That's right. You know, if they put the effort in and then, you know, they found out that like, okay, well, I have to do something different next time or I didn't plan for this well. It's really, that's really an important yeah. piece in, in confidence. So yeah. I love that you, you know, you brought that out. Yeah. I, I mean, I think about it. I, as a grandparent, go to a lot more softball, baseball, basketball games. And I'm not complaining. It's just I go to a lot of them. And I will hear families talk about the results of the game. Oh, you lost or Enough. you won. That's yes. really good. And not talk about the participation in the game mm -hmm. and the excitement of participating yeah. as part or of the team. Or your attitude throughout the game yes. or your sportsmanship throughout the yes. game. Yes, yeah. And those are, those are the more important things to measure in success in life mm -hmm. uh, rather than whether you win or lose. You know, <laughs> yes. in Chicago, we always talk about how if you just want to win in politics, just be a Democrat. You don't have to do a lot of things, brain function, to just be a Democrat and you'll win. Yeah. Well, there are ways to just win, but is that really at the end of the day the most important thing. Yeah. And I'm a Cubs fan, so that's part of the reason I say that. Well, you know, and but, then the other side of that can be is like, you know, if you end up, you know, reinforcing that, that the win, yes. then we back off, right? Yes, exactly. We're not going to try something new unless we know that we're going to win in it. Yeah, exactly. And and so you, you don't gain confidence that way. You don't gain confidence that way. Yeah. When confidence is the next C. And uh, that that's very important. Uh, we need to know that the choice we make are not only our choices and we can own them, but that they even matter, that we matter. We have to have the confidence in who we are to participate in the world, participate in a family, mm -hmm. to do the things that we do. And we're not talking about creating like that fake confidence like every kid gets a medal. Yes. Uh, we're talking about genuine praise for the important things somebody does. It helps to build their confidence. Uh, uh, you know, kids who grow up feeling, being told they're ugly mm -hmm. or they don't quite measure up will take that into their adulthood. They will never, uh, without, again, helpful interventions, they yeah. will never process that. But we know that uh, kids who are able to gain confidence through how they manage their play activity, how they, how they engage in the community, are able to demonstrate competence in a different way. So you can see how it ties mm -hmm. in together in real life situations. If I'm confident in myself and in my skills, then I'm going to feel more competent about the, the activities that yeah. I'm involved in. And, you um, know, just a practical application with that. That's something I started with my son, and now I really advocate with the parents that I coach, is to also, you know, word it instead of saying, I'm proud of you, say, you can be proud of yourself. Yeah. You know, and letting them own it more. It's like, wow, you can be really proud of that choice right. that you made is another way to, to build that confidence so they're not always, well, I'm doing this because somebody else is proud. Or it's like that in she's my mom. She's always, she's my grandma. Yeah, or she's always going to think or everything dismiss I do is it. Yeah. yeah, but build yeah. that internal piece exactly. of, you know, I can be proud of myself because I made that good decision or yeah. I followed through or whatever it may be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another important piece as we're looking at the C's is connection. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll talk more about it in a minute, but children who bully, adults who bully, don't feel connected. Yep. They don't feel as though it matters in terms of damaging the community, damaging relationships, because they don't feel connected to any of it. Interestingly enough, children who are bullied, and it has a negative impact, also don't feel connected. They feel very isolated. They don't know to whom they can turn, who they can trust, mm -hmm. et cetera. So, so there's that piece of it. So connection is just really important in terms of things we can develop 
and uh, uh, have create ways for kids to express their emotions and have them be heard and have them be not necessarily approved of, but validated. Yeah. Again, and there's that, that is, word again. Uh, you know, a big thing, yes, that I share with parents. It's, you know, you. it's not about agreeing. It's not about right or wrong. Right. Their feeling is real. So just validate the feeling. I get that. Yeah. You know, I get you're yeah. sad about that. And I always say it's out of sometimes of the goodness of, of a parent's heart that we don't want to see our kid ache or, you know, feel sad or that we can be a little bit misguided and yeah. not, you know, validate those emotions or dismiss a bullying, yeah. you know, thing. It's, it's, it's fine. It's okay. It's no big deal. You know, they're just teasing you because we, we don't want our kid to be bullied. You know, it comes right. out of a goodness, but then a little bit misguided. So that validating piece is It may so not be the important. most helpful thing to say in the moment yeah. it, it, in the moment it might feel like it is but in the long run, run. yeah it's and not. long run can only be 15 and, you minutes you know we later. think about it too i mean i think about like those friends that i have when i've just had a really rough day and you know i'm sharing just you know something really yucky that happened and they just go oh my gosh that must have been hard and you're just like they get it. Yeah, they that's all it. I needed. Yes. I don't need you to fix it right now. I just need to yeah. know that my emotions are yeah. okay. And we don't need to hear, well, that guy's always like that. Yeah, we don't need to, that's the problem not solving helpful. piece. Or, yes. or even better than that is, I've never had that happen to <laughs> Have you? <laughs> oh, great. Yes, well, yeah. So validate. Just, just, just yes. be okay with validating. I get that. Yeah. I get yeah. you're having that feeling. Yeah. <clears throat> Connection is important. We've been talking about that. Another thing that's really important is character. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, it was normal at night for dad to come home from work and for mom to have dinner and for us as a family to sit at the table and talk about things were going on that day, but we, we really drilled down deeper depending on what was going on and talk about, is that a right thing? Is that mm -hmm. a fair thing? Is that a good thing? Uh, is that the way you really want to treat people? Mm -hmm. That kind of thing, the kind of things that build character. Uh, if when we build character, we're building, we're building confidence and confidence. We're also building self-worth. Mm -hmm. Again, the person who bullies does not have self-worth. They have to use words that inflict pain on somebody else to feel their own value. Yes. The person who's bullied quite often doesn't feel self-worth. So they don't hear it as bullying. They hear it as somebody's telling a truth about them mm -hmm. that's a horrible truth. Yes. And um, so th that's why uh, character becomes very important. And to seek out those opportunities. You know, I say growing up, we sat down for dinner every night and mm -hmm. talked about these things. Well, that isn't the way the world is for everybody. Probably wasn't then, and it certainly isn't now. So we can find other opportunities to talk about character development. If we're watching something on the news yes. with a child, talk about is this the best way to treat people? Is this how you value the world? Is this how you value relationships? What would you do in that situation? Yeah, I yeah, think those that's always an important way to talk to kids about uh, uh, ways to build character, have them in small groups talk about um, what they would do in certain situations. So, yeah. And, and again, too, validating, you know, I think this is another important piece, too, with that character. You know, if your child comes home and, you know, they've been reprimanded for an action or something at school, um, that, you know, typically as parents, and again, I'm all for that there is um, accountability, you know, for your behavior. Mm -hmm. But can there also be that piece of, you know, let's just sit down, like, what was all going on? Okay, if you're, you're feeling this way and you start feeling those feelings, what's a better way you know, to handle it, you know, that, and that's that self-awareness, that's that character, and it's like, it's, it's not fair to take it out on, you know, somebody else, mm -hmm. um, you know, where can I go and get help, and I, I think a lot of times that piece is, is missed, right, because, you know, as parents, we're just like, we're upset because there was this bad incident that happened, but if we really want to build character in our kids, if we don't give them a chance to figure out how they could do that better, you know, again, we're missing a piece. I would extend that a little bit. You're absolutely right. I would extend that a little bit further, and I would say, as a parent, you find opportunities to show your own character. Agreed. And uh, sometimes kids report things to us 
that really are appropriate for parental inter healthy, appropriate parental intervention, mm -hmm. not threatening the baseball coach or telling yes. the principal they're going to make sure everybody's school's fired, that kind of thing. Not that I've ever witnessed that, <laughs> but it can <laughs> But happen. we've heard about it. We've, we've heard, heard about, about it. it. Right. Yeah. But for, for parents to, um, to demonstrate their own character about mm -hmm. talking about what's right or wrong and not leaving kids hanging, not just leave it to kids to say, well, what do you think if it's right or wrong? But to tell them. Sometimes we have to lay out why things are right and wrong. I was very fortunate, even with all the turmoil in my family, my father was one of those people who felt very comfortable and he had a manner about him people would listen to. And when we would report on things that were happening, if there was something, and it happened a couple of times where the teachers were absolutely inappropriate is probably mm -hmm. the nice way to say it, or just mm -hmm. wrong. And not only were they that, but they were chastising the kids with that to say something and have, have he, he said, I, I just need to go and, and have a conversation. And of course, in my mind, I'd say, because my dad has another side, which is just really <laughs> tough side, and say, oh, they're going to be so sorry. Yeah. No, I would watch him very calmly and quietly talk a teacher through something. I remember him saying, on a couple of occasions, they just didn't know better. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that they knew better. They didn't know better. So he used the opportunity of, by his own character and personality to go in and help them learn better. And I guarantee you a couple of things that happened never happened again. Yeah. And not because he was in there being very threatening. That wasn't his first choice of behaviors. Yeah. So finding yeah. opportunities even as a parent to demonstrate our own character. Agreed. And, yeah. you know, and sharing, you know, again, the wins and, you know, and the fails. You know, I always tell parents, you're not perfect. Right. You're going to have times when you fail. And a big character building piece is owning your own behavior. That's right. You will never undermine your authority right. by apologizing to your kids. Yeah. You are setting up a healthy picture. I absolutely agree. And again, that is a way of parents to show their character. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't happen a lot. Yes. Uh, but, uh, but the value of doing that and whether we're talking about parents, but as managers, as whatever yes, those anybody, relationships yes. are, yeah, to be able to do that is, uh, it, it says so much more positive. Agreed. Yeah, Agreed. so I think it's important. Another thing we look at is uh, contribution. It's, it's really important for kids to be able to feel they contribute. Again, look at their own self-value, their self-worth, and it's an easy thing to do. Uh, even little kids, if they set up a school project where maybe they're making artwork to send to a senior citizen home mm -hmm. or um, they're, they're collecting something for the school pantry, things like that. It's They're finding a way to contribute and you can help them to find ways to contribute and it's really valuable, not just in terms of what it does for the community, but how it helps them to feel. The other thing that you learn if you contribute is that it's not a bad thing if you need somebody else to contribute to help you out with Correct. something. Correct. Yeah, exactly. You don't that. learn that. You don't learn that unless you can be involved in things like contributing. Well, and this is, you know, I was excited that, you know, we were going to be talking about this piece because our next three episodes after this is on generosity and how kids can get involved in the community, um, specifically Sun Prairie. And I, I was really surprised on some of the cool things. I'm not going to spill the beans. Right. Uh, but we, we have opportunities within Sun Prairie to help your kids find ways to contribute. Yeah. So yeah. don't say that there isn't because I will have three episodes on how to do it. <laughs> for, for every age group, yes. and what, uh, certainly over the age of three, because mm -hmm. I think developmentally, yeah. if you're also trying to do teachable moments developmentally yes. Yes. over three, it starts But, to you know, involving important. those, like, taking them along with, you know, they yes. may not have the capacity to actually do something or making something, but just being in that atmosphere, they're taking that in. Exactly. So there, yeah. there's, we have no excuse not yeah. to, to have that piece yeah. and teach yeah. it to our kids. And, and I think it becomes, we have less, less excuses when we begin to understand the value of doing that. Our excuses might be, oh, I'm so busy now. Mm -hmm. When we understand the value of that, yeah. then we might be able to shift our priorities a little bit. Yeah, and I love the, in the language, and I'm going to read it because it was like, youth need to realize that the world is better with them in it. 
Yes. I, I love that when I was reading, you know, reading through that, that sometimes um, I, they don't feel that way. No. But we do need them. They are of value. And I thought, I just, I love that yeah. language. Yeah. And I think when we look at issues related to bullying, if you look at the things I talked about, there's certainly, uh, we could talk more about coping and, um, uh, which is managing, basically managing stress and control, which is not manipulative. Uh, I know. We're yeah. running. We're <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, but helping them to have control, self-control and control, mm -hmm. like in making certain choices, etc. Those things are important. But because we're coming to the end of this, I just want to say that things such as contribution, connection, feeling part of the mm -hmm. community, uh, etc. Those are the core pieces that they they are missing in people who experience bullying. Mm -hmm. We need to nurture those in people who experience bullying so they can appreciate their self-worth. And they are missing in people who bully. Yes. If you break down uh, workplace violence quite often start. So with my clients, sometimes they get called in after something violent has happened. I always wish they'd call me in two Before. years earlier, but they don't. <laughs> they call me in after that. Happened. But when you look at the makeup of, of the individuals involved, the individuals involved is usually pointed to as mm -hmm. the person who's committed something horrendous. Um, but if you look at the atmosphere there, they didn't feel part of the community. <coughs> they didn't feel connected. They didn't think they were of value. And they didn't think their value was being recognized, yes. which is the other piece of that. And in those situations, they are totally disconnected mm -hmm. from the community. And in the workplace and in the education environment in particular, it's really important to look at our policies, et cetera, yeah. to see how we can nurture those things. Well, we do have time. We have the last two, the coping and control that yes. I want to touch on very quickly um, because I think a lot of times <coughs> parents think of coping and resilience as the same thing. And they're not. And they're not. So it's like, oh, they're being resilient. No, they may be just coping right now, yeah. but there may be some yeah. resilience pieces. Yeah. So real quickly, coping <coughs> and control. And because, again, too, parents are going to think, control, what? You know, I don't want to give my parent, kids yeah, control. I don't give up control. Yeah, right? I am. They're the kid. I'm yeah. the parent. Right. So, and you're going to have to do your um, elevator speech on coping and control. <laughs> <laughs> so, essentially, coping is, is very much, you're right, people do think of it as sort of getting through. They must be doing okay because they're coping with something. It's, it's the ability that somebody develops to handle stress. And what I mean by that is, especially with kids, we're not talking about going to a stop smoking clinic or anything like that. We're, we're helping them develop tools to manage their stress. We're helping develop language to manage their situation. We're helping, we're giving them opportunities and permission to express that they're afraid of something mm -hmm. or they are scary, they're scared because they don't know what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And we can work with them through that. Uh, and we, we don't wanna do it like quick and easy ways, such as don't worry, I lost my dog yes. when my dog died when I was your age, and I'm just fine. Yep. Uh, or something like that. That's quick and easy, and it doesn't work. Um, and then the control piece. Yes, the control piece is very much one, not of letting them be the boss of you, which tells me something interesting about how adults view control, <laughs> by the way. But it's very much about, uh, it's in, certainly in the context of um, building resilience, but it's it's looking at ways to help. Let them be in control uh, or encourage them, not let them be. Encourage them to be in control of opportunities for helping children to understand that life events don't just happen because of them mm -hmm. or happen around them or the kids who say everything. All this bad stuff happens to me. Helping them to nurture tools to look at the reality of your parents didn't get divorced because of you. Mm -hmm. It isn't because you did something bad. Uh, it didn't start flooding today because you did something bad or wrong. Uh, and what can you manage? What are the things that you can deal with in terms of a situation? Yeah, what's, uh, what is truly in your control. Yes. And, and on the other side, I do that taking responsibility because sometimes we can be dismissive, right? It wasn't my fault. It wasn't right. my fault. And that piece of control, of owning what I did, yeah. how that influenced yeah. the outcome as well. And even even as you're talking about the seven C's and I'm listening to you, I think as adults, we could do well to revisit this <laughs> sometimes Agreed. and think about it in terms of, of uh, how we are yeah. and, and the things we always need to be reminded of. Oh, and work well, once again, we could 
talk for Forever. hours. Um, but this is, I hope this brings a lot of hope to parents that, again, you know, we have these negative things that happen and resilience is the key to help mitigate those. And, and again, the key in. to resilience is being that adult. Yes. Who helps them through this. Helps them through that. Yeah. So yeah. there, um, we have some great solutions. There are great answers to bullying and helping out your community. I want to thank you for tuning in. We've had a lot of information, but I want to remind you that investing in a child is never wasted. Thank you for watching The Parenting Game. All episodes of The Parenting Game are available on demand at sunprairiemediacenter.com.